Z97WS, WS stands for workstation, it does not stand for wingsuit, or writhing snakes, or windmill symmetry, or warlock salvation. All right, we're checking out the Z97 workstation motherboard. So let's see what comes in the box. We have uh, lots of SATA cables. There's eight SATA cables in total in here. There we go, all of them right there. All of these are gonna be six gigabit per second compatible. And then on top of that, we have uh, this is a SLI bridge. And this is nice and flexible. So if you're running two cards, you'll wanna use this. If you're running three cards, you're gonna wanna use this one. Yay, supports a uh, three-way SLI. Right there it is. You're using four cards, quad SLI, and it also supports uh, Crossfire with four cards, so you want to use that one. Back panel, IO, shield. All right, this is two USB and Firewire, and that's going to be, you know, plugging into your motherboard. Serial. Had some this morning, as a matter of fact. Hey, Q connectors. I love these. Uh, if you've never used an ASUS motherboard before, you should probably get one just for this. This, uh, you plug in all your front panel connectors and then you plug that right into the motherboard, it's way easier. And we also have the user guide, and the drivers. You should usually download the newest drivers, but this can get you by in a pinch. Ready for Windows 8.1, and we are ready to look at the motherboard itself. All right, now we're looking at the motherboard. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice there, the socket has not changed from last generation. Uh, the Z97 is using the socket 1155 for fourth generation Intel Core technology, i3, i5, i7, Celeron, and also some of the Xeons will work just fine with this. You're also gonna notice these crazy fins here, and there's uh, quite a bit of space around the CPU, and if you notice the capacitors, the chokes, and all that sort of thing are not going to get in the way of 90% of the cooling units on the market. These are not just the regular solid caps. These are like the uber quality caps. And I'm going to get a lot nerdier about all this when I do some videos with JJ here in the next few days. But um, know that this is like the, you know, the fancy Digi VRM. Uh, it's going to give you really clean power going to your, uh, your CPU socket. And uh, we'll get into the overclocking, like I said, in some JJ videos. So stay tuned for those. Um, I also want you guys to notice that there is a ridiculous amount of power on this thing. So we have two 8-pin uh, motherboard power connectors. And then down here, we have a 6-pin motherboard power uh, connector. So just tons of power. And that's because this supports a lot of PCI Express. And if you're using a gazillion graphics cards, you want to plug that in. Or if you're just, you know, maxing out this motherboard, you're going to need a lot of power. All right, up on the top, we have our EPU, dual, dual intelligent processors, EPU and this TPU. Um, it's just you throw a switch and it uh, does an under voltage al algorithm um, and that saves you a little bit of power. And then, of course, the TPU, you throw a switch and it, it does a, a basic overclock, but it just gives you extra speed with the throw of a switch instead of having to go in and overclock. I know most of you guys will be doing this manually. There's a RAM slots, man. This is dual channel and it can do up to 3300 megahertz memory. That's with overclocking. I think stock is like 1600 megahertz. Right up here, MIM OK button. Uh, MIM OK can be used to you know, fix any weird problems with the memory if you can't figure out what the speed needs to be. But it's also nice as a soft, sort of like a soft CMOS reset because it doesn't reset all of the options in the CMOS. It just resets the frequency. So if you have an overclocking problem, I usually like to use that just to do like I said, a soft reset on all the frequencies going around here. Also the T-topology here, really, really nice. Um, over here, you'll also notice that there is now an XMP um, switch. So you can throw that if you want to use, you know, the different XMP settings. All right, check out the uh, power connector. It looks like a regular power connector, but it's actually something new called the ProCool Power uh, Connector from Asus. Now, this one is supposed to be sort of a more snug, flush fit to help with power delivery and also cut down on a little bit of the heat. I haven't tried it yet because I just got the motherboard out and I wanted to show you guys around it. Uh, and I've got to jump on a plane tomorrow, so I don't have too much time. But um, it's, it's something new. I'm not sure how much it'll affect, uh, you know, anything in the real world. Uh, but it's cool to see that, you know, attention to detail, they saw something there that could be improved and they improved upon it. All right, right below that, we have two USB 3.0 headers and uh, chassis fan. There's lots of chassis fans in here, uh, several of them all over the motherboard and they're all four pin. And that's gonna be really nice when we get into fan expert and play around. All right, I'm gonna turn it sideways so you can see the SATA ports in just a second, but we have Dr. Power right there. And there's another four pin uh, fan header. I'll, I'll cover this area and then I'll show you the SATA ports because there's something new going on here that looks a little different. What's this right here? That's not like regular SATA, it's weird. Uh, there's your M.2 right there and you can, Plug in hard drive right there, nice and fast. Feeds off the uh, PCI Express bus. Everybody's jumping on the bus this time. All right, down here on the bottom, front panel connector here. And then uh, right above that, we have um, some jumpers and then there's a um, um, reset 
CMOS button there, the little red button. We actually have a jumper on here that will allow you to, um, it's like a jumper for over, over voltage. So it's kind of old school. Got our jumper on there so we can send more volts to everything. Yeah, fancy, this is scientific. Trusted platform module. And uh, over here we got some more USB, of course serial. And then there's Firewire, power and reset right on board. They pretty much loaded this and there is your um, front panel like audio connector. All right, over here, we have um, tons of PCI Express. It's kind of crazy uh, how much is going on on, the, uh, on this motherboard. So we have four of the 16 speed slots. If you're running graphics cards, it runs in 16 and 16 if you're running two, 16 and 16 right there. And then if you're running three, it's 16, eight, eight, 16, eight and eight. And then if you're running four, it is eight, eight, eight and eight. All right, then we also have two of the one speed slots right there and then uh, one of the uh, four speed slots. And then right there, if you guys can see that, that is a Thunderbolt header. Cause there's no Thunderbolt port on the back, but we have a uh, TV header right there. All right, before we look at the uh, back panel, oh yeah, we got the uh, Realtek audio codec down here. That's the Realtek ALC 1150. And we've got all these special capacitors that are just for the sound card. This is this did not have like the separated area of the PCB like you'll see on some of the uh, enthusiast parts and also uh, even some of the uh, mainstream parts, you'll see that. But this is a, you know, it's it's the workstation motherboard. It's got like all the features, but um, doesn't quite have everything as far as audio goes, but it still has the uh, high quality Realtek, Realtek codec that I've used in place of sound cards. I don't really care about sound cards. I'd rather have that. Oh, one more thing before I move on right there. That is your uh, BIOS chip and it is uh, removable. You can just pop it out of there. So that's nice to know. All right, it's time to look at the SATA connectivity options. Now you see we have four ports here on an Asmedia controller. This is all SATA 6. And we've got this weirdness here. What on earth is this? Well, this is SATA Express and it actually does not use uh, SATA. It's, it's a totally new interface. There's not a lot of devices out for it right now. Each one of these is like one port. There's one big cable that plugs into this entirely. So that's port. And then that's a port as well. Uh, and it's capable of some ridiculous speeds. I'm not even sure what the top uh, you know, speeds could be in the future, theoretically, possibly not on this platform, but it could get up to 40 gigabits per second. Um, but right now it is compatible with two, you know, six gigabit per second SATA uh, interfaces right there. But you know, you get the, the new SATA Express and uh, it's gonna be quite crazy. So they have sacrificed a few SATA ports in comparison to some of the other motherboards, but SATA Express plugs straight into the bus. So you're getting a ton of speed right there. Okay, on the back, we have our uh, E-channel audio right there. And then we have uh, USB 3, we've got six of those right there. We have dual gigabit Intel uh, NICs right there. That is a mini display port, BIOS flashback button. And that's, you know, we've made a video on that showing you how that you can uh, update your BIOS or your UEFI just with the touch of a button and uh, you, you know, your, your uh, UEFI on a USB stick so you won't even need to have a CPU installed. It's really stupid easy. There's a Q code indicator that gives you like the error codes. And let's say that you, know, you, you don't wanna take off your side panel, that's frustrating. What you can do is you can plug uh, a USB stick up to the back and press this button and it will give you your error code and, your, and some information right on the USB stick. That is pretty handy. All right, so we have DisplayPort, HDMI, and uh, there is your digital audio. I forgot to mention we also have an eSATA right here on the back and USB 2, two of those. So this is uh, really handy for, you know, plugging up your um, mouse and keyboard and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, no PS2. All right, in a future video very soon, we're gonna check out Asus's um, five-way optimization. Um, this is going to include the DigiPlus power control, TPU, EPU, Fan Expert 2. Uh, and also the ASUS graphics card. So those, there's a lot of tuning that can happen around here. And uh, Fan Expert 2 on this is gonna be pretty awesome with all these all these fan headers. I also wanna mention that the uh, power delivery on this is an eight phase uh, power delivery system here. And you can see uh, it's all under there. And a lot of people are like, well, I've seen it, you just have to take a 30, 30 phase power delivery system. And it's not about the amount, it's about the quality of the components used. and. Uh, with this eight-phase power delivery system, ASUS has been able to do some things that some of the guys with, you know, a 32-phase power deli delivery system uh, have not been able to do. So we'll, we'll try this out and we'll do some overclocking on this and uh, see just how good it really is. But I want to mention that the Z97WS boards really has almost all the features that you're going to see on some of the best ROG motherboards as far as overclocking goes. And then on top of that, they have all the features you're going to need uh, for an awesome workstation. So you can still overclock, you can game on this like crazy, in fact, some people prefer this platform
platform for gaming. It's going to be really stable because, you know, it's a workstation board and they put a lot of work into making sure that it is going to be as stable as possible. So again, stay tuned for our videos with JJ to get some uh, information on the exclusive features from Asus and also the software and maybe even a few uh, interesting tidbits that I don't even know about yet. This is still, you know, a pretty crazy new platform. So we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>